Right, hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for today's webinar, which is all about how to pass your CQC registered manager interview questions and answers. My name is Saba. I'm one of the senior compliance consultant at Smart Dental Compliance and Training. And myself and my colleague, Victoria, would be doing, Hi, would be doing the interview today. So registered manager interview is usually carried out when you are applying either for a brand new CQC application form. So if your practice owner or if yourself, you're opening a brand new dental practice and you have submitted the new provider application form, or you have submitted the new register manager form alongside with your application, the next stage would be that you would get a call from the CQC who would request for dates for your registered manager interview questions and answers. That's one scenario where you would have to do the interview. The second scenario is if there is a change of registered manager um, within your premises. So if the registered manager has changed, then again, CQC would contact you to say that there will be booking a registered manager interview questions and answer with you. Um, these are the two scenarios where you would be present um, within the interview. Now, Everybody really gets terrified from the interview because they think that, oh my God, what are the questions we're going to be asked? How do we answer the questions? Um, so they do tend to get really, really nervous, especially our Scott Practice clients that we work with at Smart Dental Compliance and Training. It's nothing to worry about, guys. It is a very, I, would, I wouldn't say relaxed interview, but it's not a very difficult interview. A lot of the questions, if you think about it, they are common sense apart from the policies, audits and risk assessments and questions like that. So the rest of them, all you have to do is just give a lot of like real life examples. So depending on what the question is, just think about a scenario um, which you might have been in before and then try to give examples and answer it that way. OK, so that is a bit about the interview question and answers. Now, in terms of how long the um, interview lasts, it's usually between, I would say, two to three hours. The maximum I've been in was four hour interview. That's because the site was absolutely massive. So as part of the interview, there are two stages. So the first stage would be um, where they will ask you questions, okay, um, in order to see how competent you are being a registered manager for the premises. And the second part of the interview is where they will have a virtual tour of your premises to see everything that you've provided evidence for is in place. Now, the interviews can be carried out online. So sometimes CQD do do it online. And during the whole COVID situation, they did do a lot of these interviews online. Or sometimes they can be in-house as well. So I've been in both. Um, obviously, the in-house ones do tend to get a bit more nerve wracking than the ones that are online. But the way they are conducted, the way they are formatted, the way it happens is exactly the same, whether it is in-house or whether it is online. OK, just a golden tip. If it's in-house, offer them a nice cup of tea and biscuits and they'll be absolutely fine and your best friends. OK, <laughs> so that is about the interview structure. Um, so now I'll tell you a bit about the introduction. So how does the interview begin and what happens? So during the first 15 to 20 minutes, the CQC inspector, before they're having the interview anyway, they will look at your CQC application form. But during the first 15 to 20 minutes of the interview, they will go through all the questions with you on the interview form. And just to confirm, uh, sorry, on the CQC application provider and the manager form, just to confirm all the answers you have provided are correct. So they just want to verify the information because when you have submitted the form and by the time you get your registered manager interview, there's a bit of an interval. So sometimes, um, you know, we always tell our client it can take anywhere between eight to 14 weeks. So because there's a bit of gap, they want to know that from the time that you submitted the application to the time that you're being interviewed, there's nothing that's changed. Hence why they verify all the information again. Then they also ask you about your health. If um, your health is absolutely fine, you're fit and well, if there's any disabilities, any problems. So they would ask you about that as well. Now, when you are filling the new provider and the registered manager application form, there's two very important or key role. 
So now the first role is of a registered manager, obviously, who would be managing the day-to-day -day activity. And the next person is usually the nominated individual. The nominated individual is usually the person who will take over if the registered manager is not in. So for example, if I'm the registered manager, I've gone on maternity leave, my substitute would be my nominated individual. A lot of people nowadays are filling out the application form where they want to be the registered manager and the nominated individual, which is absolutely fine. You can be both, that's not a problem. Even though ideally I do always tell my clients that try to have a backup person um, one of the reason is anything can happen at any time, any day. So if you are away, then at least you've got a peace of mind that you've got a nominated individual who'll be able to help you and support you and assist you. The second reason why I do tell our clients to, um, you know, allocate a nominated individual is because um, during the interview stage, if you're the registered manager and the nominated individual, you're going to have to answer all the questions, okay? Whereas if you've got a separate nominated individual, then they will ask you some questions and they will ask the nominated individual some questions. However, as I mentioned, 90% of the time, the registered manager and the nominated individuals are exactly the same. So hence why the interview stage becomes a bit more longer because they will tend to ask you all the question rather than splitting it between two people, okay? So that's the general format of the registered manager interview um, and what happens during the introduction stage. Um, and now what we will do is we are going to role play. So myself and my colleague, Victoria, we're going to actually role play the whole interview for you guys. So you know exactly how it is, what are the questions that are asked and what happens in the registered manager interview. So today, Victoria will be interviewing myself so I've applied for the registered manager application as well as the nominated individual. Um, and Victoria is the CQC inspector who would be asking all the questions um, which will be asked during the registered manager interview question and answer session. So I will pass it on to Victoria who will introduce herself and start by asking me the questions. Hi everybody. So today I'm gonna to ask Saba some questions. We're gonna treat Saba as though she is both nominated individual and manager. We'll talk through kind of step-by-step step the questions and the flow of how the questions will go. Um, so we'll start off with the first question and take it from there. So hi Saba, um, I believe you're registering to become a nominated individual and manager. I just wanted to confirm some things with you. Could you please tell me a bit about the service that you're gonna be delivering? Is that NHS, private? Could you just tell me a little bit more? Yes, sure. So we have applied for um, a new provider application and the new register application, and I would be the registered manager and the nominated individual. We are opening a brand new spot practice, which is a private spot practice. So we wouldn't be offering any NHS services. It will be a fully private dental practice. Perfect. That's really good to hear. Um, you're going to obviously be taking on a role where you'll be looking after not only patients, but as well as your staff. Can you tell me how you'll be keeping your patients free from safe, um, safe from abuse and neglect? Yes, sure. So we have got um, something that we invested into in the very initial stages of our um, uh, squat practice opening was a compliance company um, called Smart Dental Compliance and Training. And we have got their portal and they provide us with a lot of customizable templates uh, policies, procedures, audits, risk assessments. So we have invested into them and I have got my own login into that. And what I've done is I've customized all the policies. And one of the policies that I have customized is our safeguarding vulnerable adults and children policy. Um, and it talks about how we're going to be safeguarding our patients. I've also added how we're going to be safeguarding our staff members in there as well. Um, we also have a safeguarding flowchart that we will be displaying in our reception area as well as our decontamination or any areas where the staff members will be coming in contact so um, a staff area as well so we are fully aware of the and all staff members have access to our all-in-one management system the the one that we have invested into and that has the safeguarding level one and two course so as part of the induction for our staff members we will be asking them to complete the level one and two training um, in safeguarding. So three things, fully aware of the policies and procedures, safeguarding protocol, 
I myself would be the safeguarding designated lead. So I have create, uh, I have completed my course as well online on the software and I've sent my certificate to yourself. Um, so I'll be fully aware if there's any safeguarding issue, I will be inducting all my staff members at the time at the time of induction, that if there is a safeguarding scenario, they need to inform us. And one of the other things that I will be doing is I'll be ensuring that within our team meeting, all our staff members practice safeguarding scenarios. So we keep up to date with the knowledge. Um, and these are some of the things that I will be implementing and I have implemented in order to make sure I keep my patients and staff members safe from abuse. Perfect. You've answered all the questions really well there. Thinking about how you'd keep your patients and staff safe, could you tell me about the checks that you would carry out when you're taking on staff as so part of your recruitment, please? Um, so the checks I will doing on, on my staff members? Yes, please. Okay. So in terms of during our recruitment procedure, we have a very robust recruitment policy, which clearly states all the documents that I will be looking for. So depending on whether I am recruiting a clinical or non-clinical staff members, I again have a checklist from our compliance template library on the IOM software. So for my clinical staff, some of the documents that I would be looking for is their proof of qualification, um, their GDC numbers, their indemnity certificates, their proof of identification, their DBS. So as soon as they start working with us, I will ask them to apply for their DBS. So I will have their DBS number, references. I will also take in their CVs as well. So these are some of the documents I will um, have for my clinical staff. For my non-clinical staff, again, CV, references, DBS numbers, any qualification or skills they have to do their role competently. So maybe like a reception skill course, um, if they've done one in the past, if not, not a problem. Again, I will set them on, on the software and they will be able to do that on there as well. So these are some of the documents I will be asking my clinical and non-clinical staff to provide at the time of recruitment. Thank you, Saba. Um, thinking about how you would keep patients and staff safe according to Health and Safety Act, could you give me some examples of what your practice will be doing? So according to, in order to keep them safe, according to the Health and Safety Acts, we will be putting a lot of clinical governance, audits and risk assessments in place. Um, so we will we'll be carrying out a general risk assessment to see any risks um, that would be associated to our staff members. We will also carry out regular audits such as disability access audit to make sure the premises is disabled friendly. Um, and if it's not, what are some of the things we have in place? We also put together a business continuity plan to see if there's any problems in terms of fire or if there was flood or if there was theft or anything that happened, we will be how staff members uh, will be reporting that as well. So these are some of the things that I would be doing in order to make sure that um, staff members are safe and they're following the clinical governance regulations. Perfect. And what is in place to deal with medical emergencies? So if there is a medical emergency, we have got a medical emergency drugs box that has all the relevant drugs according to the UK Resuscitation Council guidelines. So, and I've checked that and all the drugs have just come in literally a week ago. They've all been checked, they've been added to the medical emergency drugs box. We also have the medical um, emergency equipment. So we've got our Ambu bag for the adult and the child. We've got different masks as well. We've got the gedrils that goes into the mouth to maintain the airways. Um, I've also placed an uh, order for the oxygen cylinder, which arrived yesterday. So I've got a contract with them, which clearly states that my oxygen is going to be serviced on an annual basis. And we have invested into a defibrillator with a pediatric and adults bag. So we've got all the medical e emergency equipment. I have printed out all the signages and displayed them in the reception area and the surgeries and decontamination room, which clearly states where all the medical emergency equipment will be kept. So all staff are fully aware. Um, we also have our medical emergency training booked in six months time when we will have our full team. So all staff will be aware how to deal with medical emergencies. Perfect. Um, thinking about infection control, how will you ensure that infection control is maintained? Yes, infection control is one of the most important aspect of running a dental practice. So the first thing um, that we are doing is looking into an infection control lead. So currently I am interviewing qualified dental nurses who I will be putting on an infection control lead course so that they are fully aware of what are the checks, audits and risk assessments that they will have to do. 
Um, the second thing that I have customized again from our IOM uh, all-in-one management system is their cross-infection policy. So within the cross-infection policy, I've customized it according to the practice. I've stated that we've got an ultrasonic on there and we will be doing manual cleaning as well. Um, we will be doing manual cleaning as part of manual cleaning as well as ultrasonic. Um, we do not have a dish, a washer disinfector in place, but that is something that we would look into getting in the future. So we've left some space. Um, the third thing that we will be doing is carrying out an infection control audit every six months. So that would be myself alongside with my infection control lead. We would sit down and um, the audit is available on the compliance portal. Um, of the all-in-one management system. So we will be carrying out that audit every six months. Um, we also have customizable logs for decontamination and infection control and for surgeries that would be on our activity calendar and we will be completing that. And last but not least, we've got access to the infection control training course online, which all of our staff members will be completing as part of their recruitment procedure and onboarding procedure and ongoing CPD cycle. Thank you. Could you please tell me about your maintenance? So have you got maintenance contracts for servicing? And could you talk me through that, please? Sure. So um, we've invested into state of art equipment and all our equipment is brand new. So our dental chair, our autoclave, our compressor, they're all brand new. And we have got a contract with our suppliers as well, which means that on an annual basis, there will be service and PVI tested in order to um, make in, in order to maintain them. I've also created a visual checklist for all our equipment. So what one of my nurses would do is visually check them on a weekly basis just to ensure that the compressor is working properly, the filters have been changed, the autoclave is running properly, and all the chairs are running properly as well. So we've got visual log sheets as well, which we will be carrying out. So apart from an external, we've got internal systems in place as well. That's perfect. Um, moving on from infection control and servicing, can you tell me, have you subscribed to MHRA alerts? Yes, MHRA alerts are extremely important, and these are medical alerts which are sent by the government. Now, within the software, we do have an alerting uh, calendar. So every time there's a new MHRA alerts uh, within our compliance system, we can see all the alerts on there as well. And then what we've got, every single staff member would have their own login. And within their personal folders, they've got an MHRA folder. So I will be allocating them those MHRA alerts so they can read it and sign it as well. So we've registered with the government website and our compliance portal is great and it sends us all the automated notifications for any new MHRA alerts as well. Fantastic. Um, when it comes to staff training, can you tell me, is it face-to-face, -face? is it online? Could you tell me what processes or what you'll be doing in terms of training for your staff, please? Sure. Um, I'm very passionate about staff training because I believe that every single person um, unless they are trained, they're not able to perform their roles competently. And training is very important aspect of our dental practice. So I have invested into both. Um, as I mentioned that we have got the compliance software, which includes 50 plus hours of verified CPD certificates for all of my staff members. So as soon as we get a staff member, they will be set on the software. So they will have access to lots of training courses on there. It's got all the mandatory CPD courses and the recommended CPD courses that they will be doing, uh, including infection control, radiography, uh, BLS training, mental capacity. Um, the other thing that, again, I've invested into is an external provider. So I have booked an external provider who would come in and do annual cross-infection safeguarding and medical emergency training, just to make sure that the team are bonding and they're fully aware. And if they have any questions, they can ask the trainer as well. Perfect. Um, talking about staff and training and person, personal development, can you tell me what systems you have in place for staff appraisals? Yes, sure you can. So we will be carrying out annual appraisal using our compliance portal. Um, they provide us with digital um, appraisal systems that we would be using. So I will be carrying out my appraisals on an annual basis. I've got two different templates on there. So I've got a template for clinical staff appraisal and I've got another template for non-clinical staff appraisal as well. Um, also, I will be asking one of my staff members to appraise me because that's very important because I love feedback. I would wanna know which area I'm doing really well in and which area I'm not performing well in as well. So I would like that for myself. Um, but yes, we have got a schedule for staff appraisal, which we will be carrying out in 
um, beginning from our first year and we've got access to the templates and all the templates are customizable, which is great because I can add more questions which are more specific to my practice rather than just a general appraisal for my team. Perfect. Um, it sounds like you've got staff training, infection control and systems in place. I'm really happy with what I've heard so far. If we were to think about the patients that you'll be seeing, could you tell me how you will obtain um, medical histories and consent from patients, please? Sure, not a problem. So when we've got a very good new patient journey, um, which will be shared with all our staff members during the induction program, our patient journey begins as soon as the patient calls us. We will make sure that we are um, leaving diary slots on our diaries so we can see emergency patient during the certain time of the day. So we are open. there's no hindrance for any patient to come in and see us. Um, and then the remaining, we will have some days where we'll, we see a lot of emergency patients as well. So in terms of, um, sorry, can you just repeat that question again? <laughs> sure. Medical histories and consent, how are you? Obtained? Medical histories and consent. So we're using an online platform at the moment. Um, so we, I've just signed up to that. And what it does is as soon as I register a patient, I'm able to send their medical history via text message. So what I will do is three days before the receptionist will send their medical history via text message. The patient will complete their medical history and send it back to us. They can send it. It's an automated form. It's all digital. So they can send it back to us automatically. Same way the consent forms. If I'm, uh, if I'm going to undergo or if a dentist is going to undergo a treatment, I'm going to send the relevant consent forms to them digitally and they will be signing it and sending it back to us. Um, until they do that, we would not be proceeding with treatments at all. And then every six months, we will be updating our medical history for our patients as well, again, through a digitalized system. Um, will you be auditing patients' notes? And if so, how often and what will the process be just to ensure that the notes are up to date? Sure. Um, so recently, I've done a quick course on record keeping audits. And record keeping audits are very important because we need to see that all the dentists are streamlining the way they are taking all their records. So we will be doing the record. Uh, it's also called a clinical record keeping audit. We'll be carrying that out every six months for all our dentists, where we'll be selecting a number of patients. And I will be checking um, all their clinical notes for the dentist to see if they have followed all the criteria present on the record keeping audit. So I will be auditing that on a six monthly basis. I, if there's any action plans, I will share that in a staff meeting or with the individual dentist um, to help them improve their record keeping audit. I've also um, told and added on our recruitment policy that clinical staff need to do a, a clinical record keeping CPD before they start working with us as well. So that will give them a really good and deep understanding of how their audits and how their notes need to be done when they start working with us. And how would you ensure that information is communicated to patients in a way that they would understand? Yeah, so one of the things that we do have is a translator line. So this translator line provides us with over 40 plus different type of languages. So if a patient comes in and they're not able to speak English, we will be calling the translator line. My first priority would be to ask the patient if they can bring a family member or a relative in that can translate. That's the best practice, I would say, and I would like them to do that. But if they're not able to do that due to their current living circumstances, then we have got the translator line, which we would use in order to make sure we are translating all the information. And if there's a patient who have got, let's say, eyesight problems or language barrier, we have printed out all the medical histories and all the patient information in three different languages, according to the market research. So they can read, um, read according to that. We also have got large print patients leaflets as well. So if anybody has got eyesight issues um, or any disabilities, then we do provide that system. The other thing we've invested into is a hearing loop. So any patients who can't hear properly, we will be using the hearing loop, which is present on our reception area to communicate with the patients effectively. That's great. Um, if you were to get a complaint from a patient, what process do you have in place? Could you take me through the procedure that you would follow? Sure. Please. The first thing we have got is a complaints policy. So I will make sure that I email that or um, provide my patient with a complaints policy, which clearly states how long and how the complaint is dealt with because um, I would want them to understand and um, how long the whole process takes. Um, the second thing I will do is email them back immediately saying that acknowledge that the complaint that we have received uh, from the patient 
And then the third thing I would do is go and investigate how that complaint happened. Is it uh, just a normal complaint or dissatisfaction? Or is it a complaint about a dentist's work that has recently been carried out on the patient? Once I've investigated, I will conclude my findings and I will email the patient back. Um, I will also try to find out what type of resolution they would like. I do know from experience that 70 to 80% of the time, patients do want a refund. So that's something that we wouldn't hesitate. And if we are able to provide that, definitely we would provide them with a refund or an alternative solution. And once I've done that, or during while I'm um, do, handling the complaint, I would log all my complaints. So on our all-in-one management system, we've got a digital complaint form where I would be logging my complaint and keeping a track of that. And once that complaint is dealt with, I will action it accordingly as well. That's perfect. Could you please um, let me know your understanding of duty of candor, please? Duty of candor, right. Um, Can you just elaborate a bit more? Uh, is it like training you want to find out about duty of candor or? Um, I just want to make sure that everybody in the team understands what it is and how you would follow it through as well. Okay, perfect. So we have got a policy on duty of candor, um, which all staff members would be delegated and they would read that policy. Um, duty of candor talks about patients, right? Making sure that they're fully aware of um, they're right. And if anything has gone wrong within the dental practice, then we are open and honest with our patients and we inform them. So that comes under our duty that we need to inform them of anything that's gone wrong or right. Um, so we've got policy. We also have a CPD course on a duty of candor, which all staff member would complete on an annual basis and upload the certificates on the compliance system. Perfect. Um, can you talk me through what type of audits you will expect to be completing? how often you'll do them and what process you'll have in place to make sure that you continue to do them and learn from anything that you find. Sure, no problem. <laughs> so I know that there's a lot of uh, different type of audits that we have to do and some audits are mandatory, whereas others are recommended. So the first thing that I will be doing is concentrating on the mandatory audits, which is my cross-infection audit that is due every six months, my record keeping audit, which is due every six months, my um, radiography audit to see if the radiographs are acceptable or not acceptable, which I will be carrying out every six months. And the last mandatory audit is the antimicrobial audit. So if we are dispensing any medication or prescribing any medication, uh, we will be carrying out an audit for that as well. But as a best practice, as I love doing audits and risk assessments, as a best practice, I will also be doing things like hand hygiene audits, complaints audits, and wherever I feel that I need to audit because we are falling short or we're having a problem with, then I will be auditing that area as well. Perfect. Will you be doing all these audits yourself? Um, so I might delegate some of the audits. So as I mentioned that I will have an infection control lead. So I will be delegating her two specific audits that I want her to assist in. So the cross infection audit and the radiography audit, um, I would like her to do that. The remaining audit I will do. Um, however, the company that I have signed up with, which is Smart Dental Compliance and Training, they do have extra packages. So I've gone for the software only, which is, nine, uh, which is um, the Smart compliance package that provides me with the software and all the digital audits on my activity calendar. But they have told me that I've got an option. If we get really, really busy and we're short of staff, then they do offer um, to send a trained compliance consultant in who can sit down with, uh, with me and support me, do, do, uh, support me throughout the audit. So they can do some of these audits alongside with us. Um, so I'm very lucky I've got that option with them as well, just in case we become really busy and I'm not able to keep in touch with all the audits and risk assessments. Fantastic. Um, how will you gather patients feedback? So um, patient feedback is very important, especially when you're starting off a squat practice, because I think that if you are getting good feedback, it encourages you and motivates you. But on the other hand, if you do get a negative feedback, it's still really positive because it allows us to improve our services for our patients as well. So there will be a couple of ways. One of the first ways are Google reviews, because I think Google review allows the person to get a very like biased opinion and they don't need to hide or be shy about it. Um, so Google reviews would be one way. We also have feedback forms in our reception area. So the staff members would encourage all of our um, patients to fill out the feedback form if they can, if they've got time. Um, and if they're happy to do so, and then just provide us with those feedback forms. And also on a quarterly basis, we will be sending out something called a monkey survey. 
which is just, again, a non-biased feedback to all our patients just to see how we are doing and if we can improve ourselves. Fantastic. And do staff have access to the whistleblowing policy? Yes. So every single staff member. So I've created a staff handbook, which all of our new staff will have access to through the all-in-one management system. And as part of their onboarding and induction, they will be required to have a look at the whistleblowing policy, read it and be 100% competent with it. Again, on the platform, there is a whistleblowing CPD, which they can do, which tells them that when they do need to whistleblow, they don't need to be shy about it. There's not going to be any you know, serious repercussions. They can be open and honest. So they are fully aware of what whistleblowing is. I've also printed out a little poster about whistleblowing and I've put that in the reception area, uh, not in the reception area, sorry, in the staff area for them to read. That's great. And do you know and do your staff know what a statutory notification is and what you would need to do should you need to notify? Yes. So statutory notifications are notification where you need to inform CQC about. So, for example, if there's been a major accident or an incident where a staff, a staff member or even a patient has lost a limb or fractured, if, for example, I go on a maternity leave and I'm not in the practice and there's no nominated individual, um, then I need to make sure that I inform the CQC as well. If there's been any like major complaint where CQC have to get involved, that would come under statutory notifications as well. Um, if there's been a death within the dental practice, God forbid, that would come under statutory notifications as well. So these are, uh, yeah, the statutory notifications. Staff members will be aware of these notifications because I will be discussing that with them in team meetings as well. Thank you, Sabah. I've been really, really happy with what I've heard so far. Um, some areas that I would like to look in a bit more detail would be your staff folders and the audits that you have in place. Could you show me how, how you are doing these and where they're stored? I'd like to take a look at how your staff folders are managed. Would you be able to show me that? Yeah, perfect. I mean, I would love to show you this current system that we have got in place. Can you see my screen at the moment? I can't see your screen at the moment. Okay, let me just... I can, that. yes, I can, perfect. Okay, perfect. So what I'm going to do is um, we have got, so this is our uh, compliance platform. So under HR, we've got my staff. Um, and with my staff, I've got staff profile. So I've set up all my staff over here. And uh, oops, see, let, me see. let me just log out of this one. And I will log you in my one. Just bear with me one second. Okay, perfect. So um, this is our compliance system, one of my favorite systems, which are super easy to use. On here, we have got HR management and my staff and staff profiles. So when a staff member uh, first um, joins us, one of the first things that I get to do is I set them up on here. Sorry, I've forgotten my pin, I'm getting nervous now. <laughs> Okay, here we go. So I've set all my staff members up over here, including myself. And if we go on to details, it's going to go on to that right now for you guys. Every single staff member would have their own login. They would have their own username and password. When they log in, they will be able to see their staff yeah, profiles. So under their staff profile, they've got a training like folder, they've got a recruitment folder, that. they've got a sign policy folder, they've got minute uh, minute meetings, MHRA alerts, additional document, private folder, and onboarding. So when they log in, depending on their role, they will be able to see all the CPD courses that they have to do. Um, and once they've done their courses, they can upload it onto the software as well. Under the recruitment, I will be uploading their proof of identification and contracts, but they also have an option to upload some of their recruitment documentations. Now, when these documents are uploaded, I can add the expiry date so that my staff members could get a notification that they need to upload their latest um, certificates on here as well. We've also got signed policies. So once I've customized all the policy, I will allocate it to all my staff members. So all my staff can read and sign all the policies. Similarly, I've got meeting minute folder, which I love because I can upload all the meeting minutes because a lot of the time if some a staff member is sick or they can't make it to the meeting, I can just upload the meeting minutes and then they can read and sign it. 
So that shows me that they have actually acknowledged what was said in the meeting. MHRA alerts, any additional documents. So if I was to carry out any disciplinaries or any grievances or anything like that, I would put it under the additional document folder. Uh, one of the other things that I have put into place is return to work. I think return to work is really, really important. So um, all the return to works that will be filled out, I will be uploading them all under the additional documents. And what I will be doing is um, there's a feature on here which says reports. And what I could do is I can run regular reports on all the HR um, HR management on, for example, let's say recruitment report to see who's uploaded what certificate and what certificate is missing. So that makes it makes it in my life so much easier because I can instantly see with one report who's uploaded what recruitment certificates and who's uploaded what training certificates on here as well. So this is something that I've implemented just before the start of the practice, which I think is very beneficial and it would be really good in the long run. Not only has it made your life easier, but me oh, as the awesome. inspector, it's made my life easier because I don't have to go through various folders That's looking for missing information. You've shown me a report and I'm happy with that. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, sorry, I think you're just on mute. If you can unmute yourself. Hello, can okay. you hear me? Yes, perfect. Hear you. Yeah, perfect. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Um, could you just show me kind of how you're going to manage your audits or how you're going to manage the tasks that you need to do in the practice to ensure that you're compliant? Yeah, so in terms of the audits as well, again, while I'm on the software, um, within the activity calendar, I'll just again show you because um, I've already set this up with one of our compliance con uh, with the compliance consultant from Smart Dental Compliance and Training. So I'll just show you over here, as you can see, um, all the mandatory audits very nicely, they have put it in red. So for example, um, my complete my health and safety audit, that's here as well. And all the audit questions are here. So what I will be doing uh, when the date comes, I will be going through this audit, completing it all. And then when I scroll right to the bottom, it's one of the features that I really like about this is it gives me a comment box and an action plan. So if I've said no to any of those questions, I can create some action plans and put it in the action plan box, and then I can save this. And when you guys come out to inspect me, I can get this audit up and send it to you guys as well. So all the audits are structured in a digital format. Also, um, the reason why I decided to go for this software compared to the others, because it's totally digital, and I don't need to download any paper. I don't need to print out anything. I don't need paper folders because I've literally got no storeroom in this practice. Um, it's a two surgery practice, so we don't have any space. So this is totally digital. What I have done is I've got an iPad and I've downloaded the app. So all my audits and um, risk assessment will be done straight from the app. Perfect. I'm really happy with that. One of the another reason why I'm happy is, as you may know, the way in which we will be inspecting will be changing soon. So this is like a really easy system that you have in place where should I need more information from you, you can send it to me very easily. It's digital and quick to scan and look for loose information. So I'm happy with this. Perfect. Perfect. I will uh, go through all the answers that you've given me and I will report back to you soon. But no, really happy with everything that you've answered there. You answered it. Perfect. Okay, thank you so much. Um, any feedback or is there anything you would like me to improve on? Or do you think um, any I'm tips? Happy with, uh, really happy with the system. I think you've got everything in place that you need. Um, you've got all your staff training ready, maybe to delegate some of the training to them so they're prepared for when they do start. Um, and just make sure the induction process is really smooth as well. Um, and otherwise, I believe that the practice is going to do really well. You've answered all the questions just as I would like to hear. I believe your practice would be safe, effective, caring and very well responsive and well led. So I'm really happy. And you've answered all the questions that I need. And I can see you've got really good processes in place. Um, and I would be happy for you to take on the uh, registered manager role. Oh, that's great news to my ears. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time as well. Um, I really appreciate that. And yes, I'm really looking forward to starting the practice. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, guys, that brings us to the end of our registered manager interview questions and answers. So I hope that gave you guys the confidence, the understanding of how these 
Uh, how, do, how is the registered manager interview question and answer conducted? These are the very most common questions that are being asked um, to registered manager interview uh, as well. And as you can see, what I was doing in my interview, there was a point where I become, became a bit nervous on the duty of candor question. And I did ask the inspector if she can kindly repeat exactly what she would like me to mention. So that's absolutely normal. It's absolutely natural. So don't worry about it. If you do become nervous, that's not a problem. Just ask the inspector to elaborate in terms of um, you know, what exactly they are trying to say. Also, as you um, heard that I did forget some of the questions as well. Generally, you're super nervous. So it's absolutely fine to say to them, please, can you repeat the question for me? And they will repeat the question for you. And then it will finally start clicking in your head that these are some of the answers. And as you saw all throughout my interview, I was trying to provide a lot of, a lot of evidence. And that's what they want you to do. They want you to provide you with evidence. So even if you're not using the all-in-one management system, let's say you've printed out some audits, you can just hold the audits up and show that to them, that here are the, these are some of the audits, these are some of the risk assessment. Obviously, as you heard the inspector, they are changing into total digital and there's lots of changes that are coming up. So they would like, you know, a digital platform. So, um, you know, again, that's something that you guys can think about. But the more evidence you provide during your CQC registered manager interview, the more better it is. Um, especially like when there was um, a medical emergency question where she asked, that what have you done in order to make sure or how will you deal with medical emergencies? If you are using your phone for the registered manager interview question and answers, take your phone into the room where all the medical emergency drugs box is kept and you can just show them, say, this is where the medical emergency drugs box is kept. These are all the drugs. Try to provide as much evidence as you can because then you'll have to do less talking um, and you'll feel less nervous because I'm 100% sure you will have everything in place and you know everything but it's just at that time you tend to become nervous and you start forgetting a lot of the things. So absolutely fine, show them the evidence, show them you are competent. I'm sure you guys have done lots of CPD courses, especially if you're uh, uh, registered with the GDC, you regularly have to do your CPD courses. Talk about that. I spoke about my CPD that I've done on safeguarding. I also actually spoke about record keeping um, CPD that I recently completed. So I demonstrated that I am competent enough because if you are not, if you're not GDC registered and you're applying to become a GDC registered manager, then it's really important that you do your CPD courses because this will demonstrate to the inspector that you have the correct and up-to-date knowledge in order to be a registered manager. Okay, and things, terminology such as duty of candor, health and social care act, Gillick competency, statutory notifications. These terminologies are extremely important. So please, guys, make sure you are 100% comfortable with these terminologies. You've looked into them. You understand them. Again, I'm just going to emphasize the same thing. I learned all about this through CPD courses. So the more CPD courses you do, the more it will be a lot more easier. Because if you sit down and read the Health and Social, uh, Social Act, it is, it's massive. It's really, really big and you wouldn't be able to do that and you wouldn't understand it. Whereas if you do do your CPD courses, then 100% you will be able to understand that as well. Um, as you saw, obviously, we only had like about 45 to one hour. So we, uh, what um, Victoria done was selected the most frequently asked questions. There are a lot more questions that they do ask. Um, which are very similar. Some of the questions will be very similar. So where you saw that Victoria was talking about how to keep patients safe, they might also ask you how to keep your team members safe, um, how to commit your, you know, uh, keep the community safe. So a lot of the questions are around safeguarding. And again, you might feel like, oh, it's exactly the same answer that I'm giving her. But yeah, that's right. It is the right answer. Anything got to do with safeguarding, you have to demonstrate what you have in place. So you've got a safeguarding policy, you've got a safeguarding flowchart, you've got um, a safeguarding lead, your staff have completed safeguarding training. So a golden tip, if you do feel like you're going to get really, really nervous for each of these categories, whether it's safeguarding, whether it's statutory notification, whether it's talking about recruitment processes, just jot down some notes. Okay, so just make notes what you've done. 
Again, you saw that Victoria asked a lot of questions about audits and risk assessment. Jot down some of the audits and risk assessment that you guys are going to do or you have access to. So when you are you know, answering the questions, you've got it there and you don't tend to forget. So you can make as many notes as you want before the interview sessions and you can use your notes. It's not a problem. It's not like they're going to say, why are you using your notes? Um, if you do tend to forget something, that's fine. You've got your notes in there. Revert back to your notes. Have a look at it. Take it easy. One of the things that I would highly recommend, if you are a super nervous patient, a person, sorry, not patient. Um, <laughs> if you are a super nervous patient, again, patient, person, <laughs> there you go. I'm getting nervous myself now. So um, I'm losing my words. Have a bottle of water, okay? Put it right next to you with a glass. So just have a sip of water and just take a breath and say, can you just give me one minute? Um, you can ask for time. It's absolutely fine. It's not like it all, it has to be rushed or it's not like an exam. Like, you know, when we sit at universities where there's time and where there's all these things in place. So it's not an exam. You don't need to, um, you don't need to rush through it at all. Take your time, have a window open, have some water, maybe a cup of tea or Lucozade or Red Bull, whatever you guys fancy, whatever works for you, just have that next to you and just take your time. And one thing, please don't hide or shy away from asking questions. Don't just say, look, I'm really not 100% sure about duty of candor. It is something that I have read, but it's just not coming to my mind at the moment. Can we come back to the question again, if you don't mind? Simple, not a problem at all. You can come back to any of the questions that you want. They will come back to it later on. It's absolutely okay. Sometimes things tend to slip from our head. So if you don't feel or like you've got the right answer at that moment, just come back to it. Not a problem at all. Okay. So these were some of my golden tips. I hope you found today's webinar really, really useful. Um, and I hope it all went well. As I mentioned, if you have guys got any question, if you are not using a compliance system and you're interested in the compliance system that I demonstrated through my registered manager interview, if you've got a registered manager interview coming up and you want some more, you want access to all of the questions that are asked, please give us a call or send us a message or fill out our inquiry form. More than happy to send you the list of all the questions and sample answers as well. Um, if there's any questions about the services or the products, um, I'm really, really excited in January, we're launching something called the Smart Consult Package um, for our lovely compliance members. So if you have a look at my screen right now, uh, let me show you this. Okay, uh, there we go. So as you can see on my screen, we have got three compliance packages at the moment. So we've got the all-in-one management system, which includes the software um, onboarding. We've also launching a brand new smart consult package, which again, I mentioned in my interview, because when you are a registered manager, there's a lot of responsibilities that you have and completing audits can get very tedious and time consuming. So we've launched a brand new smart consult package, which will be coming out in January. Some of our clients are already on the waiting list mm -hmm. for it. So I'm super excited. The Smart Consult Package will give you a dedicated experienced compliance consultant who will come into your practice four times in a year to update all your audits, all your risk assessment, your HR files, your recruitment files. So we would basically, you're fully outsourcing your compliance. And that means that you can have more time for marketing, more time for social media, more time looking at how to grow the business managing your staff a bit more better, having those personal one-to-one -one conversations with them because we're dealing with all the compliance. So again, if you would like this chart emailed to you, just give us a shout, put your name down on the um, meeting chat and we will share this chart with everyone. Um, you can have a look at our products and services and what we do. Um, and this brings me to an end. It's 1.49 now. Thank you ever so much for- Thank you everybody. Webinar and supporting us. I wish you all a very se happy season's greeting, happy new year, and we'll see you all in January with some new webinars. If there's any topics that you would like us to cover in our upcoming webinars, please let us know, um, and we will try to cover all those topics for you uh, from the new year. But we do do these webinars once every month, so we send out all the links. It's also on the Actively calendars for you guys to join, and I hope you find them useful. If you did, 
please feel free to give us a Google review. And we look forward to hearing from you all very soon. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. <laughs>